I'm getting more vibration on this jointer than I like, and I've got an idea for trying to dynamic balance the head on here. But this jointer is a bit dangerous and scary for that, so I thought first I'd try to see if this works on something a little less intimidating, like this blower here. Imagine this blower had a heavy spot right here. I could figure out that heavy spot just by kind of shaking it back and forth long enough, and eventually that would work its way to the bottom. But what if this blower had a heavy spot here, and then on the opposite, on the opposite end, another heavy spot here? Now shaking it like this, it's not out of balance in a static way, but when it's running, both ends are out of balance, and so it'll want to vibrate like this. And the only way to measure and correct that is with dynamic balancing. And this blower has already been balanced to some extent with these little weights here and here, but it's not perfectly in balance, so I want to see if I can do better on this. The key is to be able to measure the vibrations, and for that, I'm going to use this little speaker, which has got some weights glued onto it, and if I hold that on here while it's running, hooked up to an oscilloscope on my computer, I should be able to measure the amount of vibration. And I'll put something soft under it so it can shake more freely. So I'm clearly picking up vibrations from this thing here just by holding it on here. And also on this end, although those vibrations are much more complicated. I want to be more consistent with how I hold that speaker on there, so I made this little bracket that the speaker fits into that I can just screw on there. Now looking at this waveform, it looks like I have multiple components on here, uh, but with this uh, scope program I actually have a spectrum analyzer feature as well, and if I move my cursor around this little peak here, is 120 hertz, so that's twice the line frequency, and then the big peak here is the actual vibration from the motor, um, that's at 50 hertz, so the motor is running at uh, 3000 RPM, which is pretty normal for a shaded pole induction motor, that varies depending on the load on the motor. So now with this running, if I block the fan's airflow a bit, it speeds up, and that means this whole thing there moves to the right. But let's assume I didn't have the spectrum feature, so I'll just take the peak-to-peak uh, -peak of my waveform here. And that is 88 millivolts. So now let's try adding some weight. I've numbered some of these fins on here. I'll put the weight on what I call fin number zero here. I'll just attach it like that by twisting it on. And that made it worse. And now let's take that weight off and move it to another fin. Just got to get it out now, arg. So next I'll put it on position 6. That's uh, the 6th fin of 24. That's 97 millivolts. And now on fin number 12. So that's actually quite a bit less shaking now. So I'll call that 55 millivolts. So position 12 was best with 55 millivolts. Going six fins to either way gives me the same amount, which is to say 12 is probably the optimal. Question is, do I have the right amount of weight on here? Let's try a bit more. Oh, and that is even less than I had before. The cursors were peak to peak before. Let's go back to spectrum analyzer view. And I have two peaks here. This is from the actual fan rotation. It moves if I block it, and this is from the motor. So this is way smaller than what I had before, so uh, I'll call that good enough on that side. Now with the pickup move to the motor side, uh, this looks pretty random. We don't seem to have any sort of dominant frequency. Looking at the spectrum analyzer mode, we have this peak here, which is the 50 hertz. That's from the rotation. Next one is at 
60 hertz pretty much. That's probably picking through from the motor. And then another one, 69 hertz, I'm not sure what that one's for. And then the last one here is 120 hertz, that's also from line frequency in the motor. So this little peak here, a relatively small one, is the actual one from out of balance. So the motor's currently on, but rotation blocked with this piece of wire here. And we're getting uh, almost as big a signal as if it's running. Let me unblock it. I just realized if I move my pickup further away from the motor, I pick up less of the motor's vibration. And from that, I was able to figure out that uh, these two weights help to balance a little bit. But now while it's running, I think I can barely feel some uh, low level vibration from the rotor. So I'll uh, make these a bit neater and then I'll try it on here again. And with a bit more tweaking and checking, it turns out to compensate for having added this here, I had to add this tiny little bit of weight here. And that's really no surprise because adding more weight on this side will probably move the other side the opposite way a little bit. Just imagine this sort of thing here. If I hit it on this, you'll notice this side moves back a little bit. So probably that sort of effect. So now if I put my finger on here, I can feel hardly any vibration at all. On here a bit more, but I know that's mostly from the motor, so I'll call that good enough. And whether this method will work on my jointer is yet to be determined. Uh, that'll be another video.